While Spider-Man may be the world's most popular superhero, and he may be on the moral high ground most of the time, Spidey has had his fair share of fails and mishaps that really just make us look at the character in a whole different way. Those instances that I missed last time are what we're exploring today. Let's do it. An attendant affair. Now, Betty Brant got married in Amazing Spider-Man number 156 and headed off to Paris for a honeymoon that doubled as a work assignment for her and her new husband, reporter Ned Leeds. However, in Amazing Spider-Man issue 188, Three, we see Peter propose to Mary Jane and her turn him down, which puts him in a pretty dark place. Which means that when Betty shows up in Peter's apartment in Amazing Spider-Man 184, there are going to be some issues. However, Betty claims to have left Ned on their honeymoon while also on assignment together. But here's the biggest kicker. She never told Ned that she was leaving him, but she still intends on sparking a romantic relationship with Peter, which he ends up shutting her down in number 186, telling her that he can't be with her. But she doesn't take no for an answer, and in issue 187 makes her own move and just goes for the kiss, saying, shut up darling, just kiss me. The next panel then cuts to a few hours later, which sparked the debate whether he and Betty actually ended up bumping more than lips. And then Ned ends up threatening to kill Peter if he doesn't stay out of Betty's life. So, yeah. In a nine failed Gwen. There are multiple instances of Spider-Man failing Gwen Stacy, both in the comics and in the movies. The more recent moment being in Amazing Spider-Man 2 starring Andrew Garfield. In both instances, Gwen Stacy is killed thanks to the Green Goblin, although in the comics it was debated for ages whether or not Peter was to blame, since he could have been the reason her neck snapped. It was also debated whether or not she was dead before the plummet, but I think we can all agree that she fell for him. She fell head over heels. And this idea that it was Peter's fault was only added on to in The Amazing Spider-Man since the only reason Gwen was there was because he, Peter couldn't stay away from her because he didn't give his blood to Harry and then because he was relying more on his webs than his physical ability as Spider-Man. But at least the Tobey Maguire version didn't end up having any issues with Gwen Stacy, right? Oh wait. In an eight, kissed Gwen. While the comic version and the second movie version ended up getting their Gwens killed, Toby's version ended up saving his when she fell out of a building in Spider-Man 3. Doing this even earned him the key to the city. And while a lot of the bad things that Peter does in this movie can be written off as the symbiote, at this point, Peter hasn't gotten it yet. So, when at the ceremony, when he was going to get to the key to the city, he decided to go the extra mile and let Gwen kiss him while he was hanging upside down, that's entirely on him. Something that Mary Jane, his current girlfriend, who was also at the ceremony and knew his identity, didn't enjoy. Especially because firstly, that was like their kiss theme. Cause like it was the kiss that they had after he saved her in the first movie. And, and secondly, because she left J. Jonah Jameson's son at the altar for Peter. And then this man goes and kisses another girl right in front of her doing their thing. Yeah, that's a total move. That, that, a horrible idea. As an empath, I know how MJ was feeling in that instance. But I, I really don't get why he thought that this was a good idea. Like, yeah, sure, the papers will love it, but that doesn't mean it's a good idea. You aren't even getting pictures of this to sell to JJ, so like, what's the point of pissing off your girl? Horrible move overall. And it's seven almost killed Shocker. The 90s animated series for Spider-Man has a lot going for it. I love the series and have watched it many times. In fact, I'm watching it right now again. But the things this Peter did while using the symbiote suit are kind of messed up. For instance, JJJ ends up putting up a bounty on him for accusations of thievery. But when people start using sonic weapons, he ends up trying to blow them up. There is literally a line where he says, my suit has cruise control, but your suits, your suits have backpacks that blow up when they get wet. Uh, yeah, well, he then breaks a fire hydrant to shower them with water, which basically would have killed them if they didn't run away. He also almost killed Shocker during their battle at the church, just before Brock becomes Venom and Peter loses the symbiote. He saves him just in the nick of time, but it's certainly not a good look for a show that will really only say destroy and not kill. Like the Punisher comes in and they say lethal force and then that's it. And then like one episode Spider-Man says that the spot doesn't look like a killer but that's the only time they have anything close to the word kill. I mean like I get it like it was the 90s and they didn't really go that dark but still. And it's six the fairy. While attempting to stop a weapons deal Spider-Man gets into a fight with a vulture that nearly destroys a fairy full of people in Spider-Man Homecoming. And while it was totally meant to be like the most innocent thing it certainly wasn't a smart idea. Honestly Spider-Man should have just thrown the weapon into the ocean as a way to stop it instead of webbing it on 
onto the boat. But technically, I guess he didn't know what it could do, but it was also still firing on its own when no one was holding it, which should have been enough warning that this wouldn't end well. However, he webs an energy weapon to the ground and then it splits the ferry in half. He does his best to save it, but only ends up being 98% successful. Like, it was working until some dude gets a little too excited and starts clapping and breaking the webbing, which wouldn't really be Peter's fault. But then, when the webs start to break, Pete just kind of like sits there and watches and doesn't really try to repair anything. He eventually jumps in to try to grab one web, but like plenty had broken before this, so he, he should have kept going. As soon as she said 98% successful, you go out and you do it again. Like, come on, bro. Halfway through in a number five, tried to kill Sandman. This is something from Spider-Man 3 that we could consider to be because of the symbiote. However, considering how Peter wanted to kill the guy he thought killed his uncle when he first got his powers, I don't think the symbiote has much to do with this instance of him wanting his uncle's killer dead either. Sure, he's a little more aggressive about it. Like, without the suit, he probably would have asked a couple questions first. But I think that ultimately, the fact that he wanted his uncle's killer dead was the driving force behind this. I mean, like, the suit definitely made him like really go for it but he he wanted it obviously he doesn't end up actually killing Marco but he certainly thought he did he was proud of it too even telling Aunt May who he won't even tell that he's spider-man too despite not living at home anymore and her being attacked by enemies multiple times and then getting mad at him when he runs off because he has some spider manning to do he really only snaps out of it when Aunt May tells him that what spider-man did was pretty messed up but like I feel like she kind of like knew like she was like yeah that's that's up man spider-man shouldn't have done that do you think that this version of Aunt May knew that he was spider-man or do you think that she was oblivious i don't know let me know in the comments in it for broken promise okay spoiler alert for no way home since i feel like i still need to give a warning about it even though the movie was released last year <laughs> so for this and number two there's a spider-man no way home warning in effect okay if you haven't seen it go do that because it's an amazing movie but the ending had me wailing. So as we know in the climax of the movie, spoiler alert, at the Statue of Liberty, we see the multiverse crack open and everyone who ever knew that Spider-Man's name is Peter Parker is now coming through. So in an effort to stop this from happening, Peter tells Doctor Strange to cast a new spell, this time that makes everyone forget about Peter Parker, including Doctor Strange, his best friend, and his girlfriend. In this case being Ned and MJ, not Doctor Strange's best friend and girlfriend. Peter goes to say goodbye and tells his friends that he will find them and remind them of everything they've been through. MJ says that she loves him and then tells him to say it when he finds her after the spell. The spell is cast and then Peter just doesn't remind MJ and Ned because he thinks that they're safer without him. While this ending is perfect and sets up a new trilogy where the main complaint of him being Iron Boy Jr. is gone, it, it still breaks my heart. It's like, it's like, this is like the same thing that happens at the end of my favorite book. So yeah, the broken promise thing on my list for sure. Getting close to the end and in number three, threatened Kingpin. Spider-Man was in a weird place during the Civil War arc at Marvel Comics. After revealing his identity to the public, he was at odds with Tony Stark over the Superhuman Registration Act, which made Peter a wanted man. On the run, Peter, Aunt May, and MJ ended up hiding in a rundown motel while he was a fugitive. However, the Kingpin ended up hiring a hitman to put a hit on Spider-Man. It resulted in Aunt May accidentally being shot instead, leaving her critically injured. Peter would give her a blood transfusion, and while she was in a coma, he went after Wilson Fisk. Peter confronted the mob boss in a prison and gave him a fate worse than death. He defeated him in front of everyone. Peter beat the absolute living snot out of Kingpin, like absolutely to a pulp, but refused to kill him at the moment because he realized that a supervillain living with everyone knowing he can be beaten, especially Kingpin, was better than ending his life. But also mentioned that if Aunt May did die from this, he would come back and fill his lungs with webbing and watch him suffocate. Which is incredibly dark, but also kind of makes sense. I'm surprised he didn't say something like, I will pull your face off your body by just not stopping the sticking of my hand to your bald head. But hey, I guess that's just my thinking. <laughs> That's what I would do. Penultimately, in a number two, Bitter. Again, another spoiler warning for Spider-Man No Way Home. However, this time around, it isn't about the MCU Peter Parker, rather Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. Thanks to the multiverse and the return of the Amazing Spider-Man actor, we got to see how Andrew Spider-Man went on after the death of Gwen Stacy. And while the writers wanted to focus on Tom Spider-Man rather than you know, the other two, and not let them steal the show, which the actors agreed to, we still got some more story about where Andrew and Toby went after their series completed. One such reveal was that Andrew's Peter stopped pulling his punches and got bitter, heavily implying that his Spider-Man ended up killing someone, be it intentional or not. 
which some have also linked to the Morbius trailer, since there is graffiti in one of the scenes with the word murderer spray painted over Sam Raimi's Spider-Man suit. However, that pose is also from a loading screen in Spider-Man PS4, so it's safe to assume that it's just a placeholder for the actual movie, potentially to prevent any spoiler about what happened to the Spideys after their movies concluded. Do you want to see an Amazing Spider-Man 3 where like he fights Venom or something? I don't know, let me know down below, I kind of do. And finally, into number one, Spider-Carnage. Spider-Carnage isn't just the Spider-Man villain, he's actually an alternate version of Spider-Man. Hailing from one of the many Earths, this character was introduced in the 90s Spider-Man animated series. Again, my favorite Spider-Man animated series. This Peter's life was actually very similar to the main Spider-Man, except his version also lost Aunt May and developed a resentment for humanity. And then he had to deal with a clone, which definitely sucked. Until he and the clone learned that they didn't know who was actually the clone. Cause like, you know, the one going by Ben Riley could have actually been the real Peter Parker. And this broke this version of Peter who was actually still Peter. A Carnage symbiote from another universe actually ended up sensing this hatred and resentment for humanity, and through a portal created by Jonathan Ohm, it bonded with Peter, driving him even more insane, and then starting to call himself Spider Carnage. From my understanding, this character hasn't been seen since that final episode, but I still want him to like come back in some aspect, because this is so messed up, but so good. Please, like add this character to the MCU, or let Andrew Garfield fight a version version of the Carnage symbiote and then create Spider Carnage or fight off Spider Carnage or something, please. He wanted to fight an alien, so can we please do that? Please. Also, where's the pop figure? They came out with 90s Spider-Man pop figures, but not Spider Carnage? What the hell? That's all the time we have for today, friends. Thank you all so much for watching. I have been and shower me, Connor Monroe, and I'll see you in another video.